Hello my loves and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria. You can't see me but I'm here and I am so excited to bring something new to you this afternoon when it comes to our astrological and intuitive forecast. Now as you guys can see I am 1000% a paper and pen type of girl. Technology has made incredible advances in our lifetime and just in general, but at the end of the day, I'm always gonna be that person that loves pen and paper. I'm also a very visual learner, so it feels really good for me to print out on paper the chart to get my favorite handy dandy Sharpie pens. <laughs> you guys already know that I honestly feel like Sharpies should sponsor my videos because I am a huge advocate for Sharpie pens, the fine point pens, whoo, ultra fine point pens. Yo, best on the market, hands down. Okay, so anyway, I wanted to break down the astrological chart with you guys visually as well as have some tarot cards here for you to um, just really add layers to our reading for this week. So when you're ready, go ahead and grab your tea, grab some hot chocolate, get cozy, and let's go ahead and dive right in. Hello everyone, so welcome back. So first things first, one of the main things that's really standing out to me this week is not just what's happening in this week. I wanna start off with where it is that we were originally coming from. So the first thing that I want you to look at is the fact that this little planet right here is the moon. You might not be able to see it, but trust me here, maybe we can zoom in a little bit. This little aspect right here is the moon. It's directly conjunct Venus. We're gonna dive into that a little further, but for starters, I wanna go ahead and talk to you about where it is that this moon originally just came from. It's coming from this direction, which means that it went through uh, Virgo, the sign that represents perfection and organizing and really thrives in routine to Libra energy, partnership, relationship to Scorpio. Chances are what might be on your head and heart at the time of us talking about this uh, transit report now is the fact that there might have been some information, some emotions that may have come up that you have felt like it was important for you to figure out, to release, to process, to surrender. I did talk about this on my TikTok and I did talk about it on my YouTube channel that this would have been a wonderful time this week to talk about your feelings. I don't wanna say confess, but maybe talk about or address things that you have been holding on to or dealing with that were difficult. This is going to open up the door for greater intimacy with others, but also within yourself. Also, don't forget, or if you don't know, I'll tell you for the first time, Scorpio is huge about control and power. Scorpio's energy here, I'm gonna write this down, control and power. Also, manipulation. So with these words, my loves, they're not negative unless your intention is negative. If you feel disempowered or if you give over your control to others, right, with Libra energy relationship partnerships, then you can find yourself in places where you can be taken advantage of, you can be at a disadvantage. Scorpio energy this last weekend has been showing you a lot, especially with the vertex point sitting here, the faded encounters or faded moments and faded experiences that have um, taken your control, disempowered you, and have taught you, also Scorpio is about release, what it is that it's important for you to surrender, to release when it comes to maybe relationships, connections, but also how you show up in those relationships and connections, okay? The very opposite of the vertex point, which is sitting in the sign of Scorpio, and this is again looking into last week, but we're still feeling it as we enter into the start of this week. Directly opposite of that, we have the part of fortune sitting in the sign of Taurus. This has a lot to do with revealing to us, every single one of us individually, our values, what is most important to us. This is what we want to start prioritizing. And how this is happening is from the breakdown with uh, Uranus here, retrograde. This is a huge, huge catalyst for change that we're all feeling in our finances, our resources, our spending, our investments. And then not even just physical things, but what it is that we have um, prioritized, a sense of security, stability, comfort, and certain aspects of our lifestyle that we wanna start looking after. 
there it's possible that our friendships connections or our inability to feel empowered has impacted what is important to us or what spirit is leading you to understand what's important to you individually okay so for some of you guys there could have been a loss in resources money you might have concerns with money or you might feel empowered and excited about money but these are things that within the last week have been really and this last weekend have really taken center stage in your mind if it's not money and resources Sources. It could be uh, your reputation. It could be how others view you or see you. This is something that can feel like it's been taking a huge hit on you or even how you feel about yourself. For me personally, I'm going to go ahead and put myself under the magnifying glass here. One thing that has really gives me comfort, and if you saw my, my natal chart, you would be able to see it 100%. One thing that gives me comfort and control, Scorpio energy here, and makes me feel empowered and helps me feel organized is cleaning. This is because my Mars personally in my natal chart falls in the sign of Scorpio. I'm sorry, falls in the sign of Virgo, as well as my moon and my sun. So I feel really comfortable um, and I feel empowered and I feel supported and I feel like I can take on the world when my bits and pieces of my life are together and organized. However, if things are discombobulated, dusty, weird, reckless, broken, not taken care of, I I get I can rage. <laughs> I can rage. I can turn into like a little bird. Have you ever seen a bird who's um, ne nest gets uh, compromised in some way and they start flying around and just really upset? Yeah, that could definitely be my energy there. Um, yeah, so I'm just wondering what this has shown up for you in this past weekend. Again, that was just my personal example in my, in my natal chart and how it shows up for me. But for you, what are things that give you a sense of power and control? What are the revelations that showed up for you in your relationships? And did you, were you able to use this time, this transit, this energy to connect deeper with yourself and also to create more intimacy within others? And some of you guys, it's not intimacy and Initially, where it is that you're coming together, but maybe even separating, I guess, and kind of focusing on yourself, self-care, self-nurturing, so that you can show up for others um, after you have first shown up for yourself, okay? So let me go ahead and switch cameras really quickly, and then we are going to dive into the meat of this week. All right, so we had a little brief intermission, cameras switching out. Hopefully you use that time to re-up your popcorn, pour some extra hot tea in your cup. Hope you're good. Let's go ahead and continue to dive into the transit that is that I was just talking about. The fact that the moon was transiting through Scorpio. When it comes to our emotions, release, intimacy, power, control, I'm really interested in hearing, wow, don't know if you saw that. Wow, Six of Swords. This is the desire, the readiness to move forward. Mentally choosing to move forward. The angels and the guides suggesting that you are ready to move forward into smoother waters. Eight of Cups. This is about completely releasing, letting go, that which does not serve you anymore. Coming to terms with it. I do want to tell you that as the week is unfolding, the moon is waning right now, leading into a new moon in the sign of Capricorn. Now, waning energy is all about releasing, surrendering, letting go. I'm gonna talk to you a, a lot more about that later on in the video, but for right now, um, I wanna tell you that with Six of Swords showing up, the, the worst is typically behind you. Let me just ask for confirmation and clarity within when it comes to that. But this card, yeah, my love, look at that. I don't know if you could see how bright and positive that energy just shifted. This is Six of Cups, Queen of Cups, Ace of Cups. I'm gonna leave them upright from the way that I can see them right now, just because it allows me to channel and download a little, a little bit more. But Six of Cups is the card of reconciliation. Go back to that which you have walked away from. But more than anything, it's been showing up a lot lately in my in my personal readings for my clients, but also in Bahati Love Note subscription, which is an exclusive um, access to readings that no one else can get. It's just most, it's what I'm doing for that, for that small group. Um, I'll leave the links down below, but with Six of Cups energy, it's not just about going back to childhood or going back to a memory, or going back to a person. It can signify innocence. It can it signify positive, pure intention. And 
this right now is confirming Queen of Cups, Ace of Cups, the, the amount of readiness you are and willingness you are to have gentleness, sweetness, and kindness reciprocated into your life. I also feel like I'm getting this really strong message that that which you're walking away from, Six of Swords, Eight of Cups, Five of Pentacles, even though it can come up with very difficult emotions, especially when it comes to release and surrender, I really feel like you are just, you've learned as much as you can from any type of situations that have had you um, withdrawn is the first message, like maybe wanting to close your heart off to the world, maybe wanting to stop yourself from venturing out into new experiences. Maybe this is a connection and disappointment. This could at one point have made you feel like, I don't really wanna love again, but for whatever reason, this was, especially with this new moon coming up, because look, this is what happens next. The two of wands is the card of, there's gotta be something else better out there for me. There's a dawn of a, do a new day, especially when I've mentally chosen that I wanna do better for myself. I mentally want to pursue a, a different path or pursue freshness and life and love and vibrancy once again. And that's what makes you close the door or begin to step forward on that next chapter. Now granted, the natural part of mourning is the Five of Pentacles. It's mourning the fact that there had to have been a loss in the first place. But right after that, we have the Two of Wands and it's the card of there's gotta be something out there. There's gotta be adventure. And I love that too because that's actually how we're starting the week off on Monday, the 8th. The 8th until the 9th, like into the early 10th, the, the moon is going to be in the sign of Sagittarius. This is absolutely stunning because it's the card of wanting to venture out, wanting to go to the unknown, wanting to take a risk, wanting to put yourself out there, wanting to explore all of your options. Wow, look at the next card that jumped out. It is the Hanged Man. I'm going to flip it this way the hangman, it was upright. So these are circumstances that spirit had you kind of hung up on, but also I wanna tell you, not hung up on in a bad way, um, hung up on the fact that it was just really, they're not really allowing you not to learn this lesson. Like you have to master this lesson or be in this season in your, in your life so that you can begin to see something from a different perspective and then choose to, to begin to explore your options or walk in a different direction. Now, I do wanna tell you that it does seem that from the way the cards are panning out, that this release, this, comp this, this side of yourself that's leaning into compassion, especially for yourself and forgiveness in, and self-nurture and self-respect is really opening up your energy right now to actually receive something way better or to at least begin to plant the seeds for a new chapter, a new venture to unfold in your life. It's the first start of the week when the moon is transiting through the sign of um, Sagittarius that you find yourself kind of being optimistic again, feeling a sense of, op wow, guys, right on the money. We have the sun card here and king of swords. What I love about the king of swords here and the sun card together is that it feels re realistic for you to begin to have hope and to have faith and to have renewed sense of optimism in the future. Now, again, I want to almost kind of take a step back that all of this seems to stem from the fact that something you chose to let go of, and I just looked at the clock, it was 555, something that you chose to let go of, surrender, release, is what is creating the space of freedom. Chances are this was something that you might have been struggling with a lot um, internally. The Two of Swords is this is the card of truce and stag not stagnation, but kind of putting things on a still a stalemate because you haven't quite figured out exactly what you want, you need. And I feel like that's where this um, space of surrender kind of came in for as soon as you stop trying to force things or um, push forward or you, you came to terms with your emotions, you are, you're sitting with your emotions, you're taking these steps in order to feel better about yourself, the situation in life, or life is, is showing you that there's certain things that you have to let go of. As soon as you chose that, that's when you decide, that's when, when you made that decision or when that energy kind of showed up for you and you're deciding, listen, I got to walk away. Or for some of you guys, this is about getting rid of things. 
totally deciding, listen, I'm going to take the steps that is that I need to do in order to make my home, my space, my mind, my heart, my book bag, my purse clean and, and clear. Some of you guys had to make a huge investment here as well, or you are getting rid of things that have a great value to them. It could be relationships, it could be actual physical things, but you've decided to let it go. And now there's almost like this grace period of like savoring, not the emptiness, because it doesn't feel emptiness, but being able to just enjoy the present and, and minim the minimalist, the minimalism here. Now, again, I'm talking about this as if this is things, so it's possible that this was you making the choice to get rid of, release, clear out, um, donate, re um, remove. This is not, I want to tell you guys that this is this, this past week and didn't feel like gaining things. It felt like more releasing. It felt more emotional purging. Um, and the catharticism, like how healing it feels when that has been released, when that has been let go, and the sense of freedom and openness, especially with the Ace of Cups here. And this is what's opening up the energy for, especially leading into the new moon in this um, sign of Capricorn. This is what's leading into us being like, listen, this is a new fresh start for me, and I'm serious about this. I'm very, very serious about this, especially with the King of Swords here. But Capricorn energy, especially with the new moon, is always this the fresh start. A new chapter planting seeds for longevity, for future, for commitment, for the long haul. Okay? It, I just want to tell you too, I'm getting this energy that it really is not in vain. It has not been in vain. Now, I do want to tell you that at the start of this week, going right back to my Sharpie pen here, there's some energies that we want to look out for. And it's the fact that we have Mercury. Let me see if I can zoom in. Maybe not <laughs> when I tell you um, I'm always switching my camera, so I never whatever um, Okay, mercury right here is the planet of communication is currently transiting through the sign of Sagittarius Sagittarius is again very expansive adventurous optimistic Positive and sees the vastness sees all of what something can be However, Mercury is in this red, this red line here creates a square with Neptune sitting in the sign of Pisces. This energy awakens dreams, prophetic visions, intuition, feelings, subconscious, psychology. When Mercury ruling our mind is explored and, in, and feeling vast and open up and expanded upon, squaring off with Neptune, what we can have here is mental cloudiness and confusion. This could be feeling very overwhelmed by energies, um, feeling hypersensitive, feeling overstimulated. It, this is a wonderful time to take naps, to journal, to write down dreams. It's wonderful for all of these type of activities for get out, definitely getting out of your mind and getting back into your body through physical activities, especially since Mars ruling our drive, our ambition and how we how we benefit to move and how we benefit to show up for things in Capricorn. It's about um, going to routines that um, throughout time, throughout history and your life have pro have proven to be good for you. This could be working out, this could be going for walks, this could be cleaning, this could be um, making plans for the future or checking off the list of plans that, it's that, that you've already made for the future, for the present. It's something that has already been a routine, something that has always has in the past usually works for you. Going back into that space is going to help you gr help ground you even further with this um, Mercury and Neptune square. We're gonna be feeling this almost the entire course of this week, but definitely in the start of the week, it's really hard to sometimes even finish your thoughts. Um, this is very much the daydreamer, the daydreamer aspect, okay? This is a wonderful time too to kind of ask for clarity and confirmation on what others are saying. There's a high tendency of things getting lost in translation as if we were still in Mercury retrograde phase and stage here. The next day on the 9th is when the sun which is also transiting through the sign of Capricorn, really calling us to ground, center, and stabilize ourselves, is in this beautiful trine with Uranus. Again, remember we started this earlier. Asp this beautiful trine, which is activating, again, our values and what's important to us. I would really um, 
make some time for impulsive activities make even if it's planned and I, I know for some of you guys you're gonna be like how do you have how do you plan impulsiveness right but maybe it's like a spot something that you normally don't do during the week something that is fun just to kind of protect believe it or not like your mental health your subconscious and really kind of break away from your normal or lean into the new normal where you are making time and space for fun for joy for play now for some of you guys you're probably like how you know why like why are you saying that when it's not the fifth house sometimes and oftentimes when there's so much heavy energy with the eighth house being activated here from the time as I pull this chart um, with the eighth house being activated and the twelfth this can be very um, tough for mental emotional and spiritual well-being so I love to bring in this I love to incorporate the fifth house into that even though there's no transits on the planets transiting through this where you are bringing in play and fun and joy and childishness and inner child type of activities maybe creativity if you're writing in a journal if you're using this time to be productive to write in a journal and to capture your feelings and in your emotions even writing it in crayon or marker or stickers adding stickers and stuff like that photos is wonderful it's almost similar to like scrapbooking or i've also heard of junk journals when you take little tidbits and stuff um for some of you guys um getting something on the calendar this week for play for yourself look at this the next few cards to jump out here look at that wow mm -hmm. we have the ten of wands let me go ahead and set this up right for you this has a lot to do with stress management making sure that you're not overburden overburdening yourself which can be really tough when we are in capricorn energy capricorn energy is very cold and dry it's cold dry energy so sometimes when that's something that we're dealing with it's important that we're making time to warm ourselves up with fun and warmth and community and connection six of pentacles is the card of give and take and re um, reciprocating it's also um asking for help for many of you guys the next card we have here is judgment card some of someone here the burden may feel about a, a difficult lesson in life and or in this season in your life and then the next cards that we have here are the devil card and the queen of cups so again it's you might be needing to free yourself from toxic patterns and i don't want us to overlook the fact that the devil card is naturally ruled by the energy of capricorn so this could be our commitment or our conviction to something that may not necessarily <clears throat> be the healthiest for our emotional uh, well-being or even our relationships with others and our relationship with ourselves make sure that we are nurturing ourselves that we are not so heavy and hard on ourselves especially with the six of pentacles i'm almost hearing those statements that we say to ourselves sometimes like i should have done this or i could have done this why didn't i do this it's the expectations that we expect of ourselves but for right now for this week it feels heavy like a burden for some of you guys there's a commitment here that you want to follow through on you want to check in on it make sure that you're taking care of those commitments and those promises because we don't want those issues to turn into bigger situations later and i do want to tell you that there's anything here that needs to be closed out before the new moon in capricorn again this is going to be on the 11th i'm going to have a whole video on that so make sure that you're subscribed to the youtube channel so that you can gain the information for that but hopefully on the 11th you're gonna have the real fresh start here okay a new chapter a new something something else to commit yourself to something else to carry you forward i also want to tell you guys that the, if there's any bills or things that need to get paid make sure that you're taking care of that now because there's the opportunity that this week to overlook that and we don't want to do that especially at the start of this week you're going to feel the notifications coming around around on um, on the 10th of this month where you're going to be like hey listen you you owe us something here okay whether it be a bill or whatever fill in the blank the same day i want to talk to you about the fact that mars which i was talking about earlier needs us really to ground and stabilize ourselves a little further um through again routine and through activities that are very have over time have proven to be beneficial for you this could be talking to a friend a long-term friend or going to a place that is just your tried and true never disappoints you they always follow through 
um, something like that. It could be doing your routine work or maybe reorganizing your commitments. That's something that can feel very much freeing and a release. You also have this Mars and Saturn and Pisces in this beautiful trine this week. That At the start of this week, this is really going to help you as far as how you apply yourself, the energy that you're applying yourself, setting those goals, achieving those goals. I do want to tell you that even though we have Mercury squaring off with Neptune here, this is a wonderful time to be inspired by music, to make visions and plans for the future, to connect with that higher self so that you can begin to see exactly what spirit, your angels and your guides, your higher self wants for you and starts to make to start to make more steps on that. Absolutely. Look at that. This is because your angels and your guides really truly want you to be successful. Six of Wands here. Now, Six of Wands is the card of success and celebration, but I also call it my PTSD card. It's the person who's riding in from the war, and yes, they won the war, but there's gonna be a routine page of pentacles that you need to set into place, something that has been tried and true. Guys, I can't make this up. Tried and true Six of Cups. You've done it before in the past, and it's never let you down in the past. This could also represent a friendship, a connection, going back to a family member, or something, someone that is just old reliable. This could be, um, for some of you guys, when it comes to finances and resources, you might be downside from having like a luxury car to something that is more practical and realistic and more budget friendly. I know that definitely with Uranus transiting through Taurus, the budget is changing a lot for so many right now. A lot of saving, a lot of saving, and a lot of learning about um, how to protect your investments and your own survival. Some of you guys have had to learn the hard way who you can trust and who you can't. From that place, you know, again, who you can count on who you can count on, okay? There's someone here or something here that is reliable to you and is predictable and will help you to achieve your goals. For some of you guys, it's almost like, I, I wanna almost give you this example. Um, one thing that I love is like carrying a, a bag, right? Carrying a bag with all of my stuff. I feel like if my, this is again Virgo tendencies here, I'm just using myself as a example. I feel like if I have a bag on me or my purse and it has everything that it is that I need <laughs> from seasonings, because yes, I walk around with seasonings in my purse, don't judge me. There's nothing worse than going to a restaurant and they don't season the food <laughs> the way that I guess it could be and then just sprinkling some seasoning on there and then you can really enjoy it. Oh my God, especially when you're eating healthy. Sometimes, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but sometimes the healthier the healthier restaurants, if you're out and about and you are in a pinch and you didn't get to cook for yourself, sometimes the healthier options seem to be lacking a little zest. So I just carry around a little garlic and herb, no salt mix. that just kind of adds some flavor to these to these bowls and stuff and it just really makes me enjoy. Anyway, that's not why we're here. We're not here to talk about what I carry in my purse. But my point is, is that what I carry in my purse helps me be prepared for life. And from my planner to pens, to tissues, to a tampon, to seasoning, to a piece of candy or chocolate, Tylenol, it just helps me to be more prepared. And sometimes that big bag gets heavier and I need to downsize, I need to clean it out because I, I collect receipts, tissues, um, trash, you know, who knows, things that I just pick up along the way, keychains, rocks, crystals, sticks, <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is about getting back to that old reliable, like what you carry on you that keeps you feeling prepared, grounded, supported, and just helps you feel like you're ready to take, take on the world, to tackle the world. Um, I also see for some of you guys uh, going back to friendships and connections that really are good for you and they, you may not necessarily talk to them every day or if you do that's wonderful but when you do talk to them you know that there's someone that you can absolutely count on that they are just a constant. They're a good person, a good friend and for some of you guys you are showing up as a good friend to yourself. Having said that, are there any changes and adjustments that is that you need to make this week, especially with the sun in this beautiful trine with Uranus? Are there any adjustments that is that you need to make in your own routines and structure that would help you to become the best version of yourself? Let me just shuffle on that really quickly because I feel like there's a message there too, especially as we're leaning into the new moon in Capricorn again, January 11th. Wow. These new practices are going to help you, Nine of Cups, to achieve your goals, wish fulfillment. 
This has a lot to do with your work. So it's interesting too that Eight of Pentacles is reversed. Some of you guys are working on your relationship with work. Um, yeah, wow. What do you see for your career? What do you see for your business? What type of practices and things? Wow, some of you guys need to walk away from something uh, in your career and your work and your job right now in order to live the life that is that you want and deserve and that you see for yourself. I want to tell you that January 11th in the sign of Capricorn, this is a wonderful time to set intentions for the new chapter, the new path when it comes to your work. Wow, look, we have four of swords and two of cups. For some of you, this is about balance and rest and incorporating those energies more in your life. Some of you guys are working very, very hard in a career or job or expectations, and you might be overworked, again, with the Eight of Pentacles reversed. Um, someone here might need to partner up with something or someone. Seven of swords is showing up next, reversed, however. I'm going to ask for a clarification clarifying card for there there's it seems like there's a detail or some aspect that is being yeah this is a truth or for some of you guys this is a blockage that's happening in your mind or your energy space it could be mental it could be mental and emotional which are very wow spirit is telling you to really let this go to release it to come to terms with it close out this chapter and let's move forward i want to tell you and this is going to be a whole nother reading um i might actually do I might actually do a bonus reading on onto this. When it comes to Seven of Swords, Ace of Swords reversed, and the World card here, there's a new chapter, a new venture that it is that you are moving towards here. Wow, Six of Swords and the Ten of Cups. Guys, right after you decided that you are going to release and let go of something, that you've had enough of it, you've learned as much as it is that you can. I'm also hearing that for some of you guys, you need to come to terms with rest and surrender and acceptance to a certain extent, to come back home to yourself, to come in as a best friend to yourself, especially when you've put out so much of yourself in this work and this job. It it could be career, but it could be something that you were hoping and hoping for the long haul. I think I might have to do an extended reading on this because I don't want this video to be too long and I don't think that the message will apply to everyone. At the end of this reading, I will look into the world card, Six of Swords, Ten of Swords, Ten of Cups here. But this has everything to do with this new chapter. This, You guys, if you know that this message is for you, it's the season. Something is coming to a, a huge close and I really feel like there's a lot of information, Knight of Swords, that, needs, that we need to shuffle in on that. Wow about what's going to happen next and how, how you can close out this chapter, how you can say goodbye to it, how you can let it go, and what spirit is recommending for the future ahead of you. But right now, it does feel very good. When it, Going back to what it was that I was saying, Seven of Swords, Ace of Swords, both of these cards reversed here. It's important that you look into a fact or some type of information or evidence or something um, that you might have overlooked or some a blind spot. I want to tell you that everybody here in the chat, if you're here watching this video right now, you're not perfect. None of us are. And we all have blind spots. We all have areas of improvement. And I just want to tell you that with the Two of Cups here and the Four of Swords, this is about coming to terms and resting in the fact that you can't do everything and to delegate or to ask for support or to start to incorporate things to help you to achieve your goals, your wishes, and to help you to be more successful. With the Eight of Pentacles here, I just want to tell someone that this can be the sign of overworking, overdoing, overextending, and that can be really, really tough. I want to tell you that on the 10th of this month, of this week, and leading into the 11th of the new moon in Capricorn, it's possible that you might see a revelation or you might have some type of divine intervention, I'm going to say, when it comes to, wow, this is how I've been doing it, and there, there could be a better way that could really help me be more successful. Um, or if not just successful, but have more peace in my success, because that's something too that we need to ask for. The 12th on when the moon enters into the sign of Aquarius right after the Capricorn new moon is going to be wonderful because this is going to allow us to emotionally detach so that we can eat, um, get closer to this feeling of peace and serenity and um, yeah, and just start off not on a fresh note, but just a, a feeling of like energized. Yeah, I keep getting this spirit, this message here with the Queen of Cups here. She keeps showing up of emotional support, stability, compassion, kindness, love, relationships, 
Very, very healthy, very, very nurturing, very, very supported. Yes, yep. Six of Wands, Queen of Wands, and the Ace of Wands. Now, both of these cards are, I was asking for clarity with the Queen of Cups. Something here is coming to terms. Something here is coming to fruition. And again, I really want to talk about it with the Ten of Cups and the World card here. Something is a huge success here. Something has happened. Something major has happened. And you may not necessarily feel it right now because Four of Swords is here, Seven of Swords, Ace of Swords. Wow. And then the Moon card. It's going, to, I don't want to say that it's a mystery, but it's going to be under the radar. It's almost like if you're looking at a river and you don't see that there's a strong current, there's something here that is pulling something or has an influence on the situation. It will make you very, very happy. This is definitely showing up here. I think this has, you're going to start seeing signs of it around the new moon. Again, mark your calendars for the 11th. I really feel like there's something that's going to be happening here. Did you hear that? That's my Tamagotchi confirming it. <laughs> oh my God. Guys, look. Whoa. Look, my Tamagotchi's celebrating. That's insane. I'm telling you, guys, that is a sign right there. That is a message. Because I've, I've actually, this thing stays silent, so I don't know. Yeah, and what do you have to do to take care of right now in order to make that a reality? <laughs> that right there, you guys. Oh my god, another one. Guys, this is a double blessing. Something's happening. Okay, real quick pause. I just want to check on my Tamagotchi. Anyway. <laughs> Thanks, homie. Um, do you guys have one? Have you ever had one? Do you guys remember Furbies? I also didn't name my Tamagotchi, so feel free to sh throw some suggestions down in the comments. Anyways, I mean, that confirms it right there. There's something here that is a huge success. You may not see it now, but it's it's happening. Like, it really is happening. And you may get a sense of it, but you may... It, it, I just feel like around the 11th, it's going to pop off in a, in a great way. Whatever this is, should and will feel incredibly healing. And let me show you why. Because the one thing that we haven't talked about is Venus, the planet of love, beauty, relationships, and aesthetic. She is sitting in the sign of Sagittarius. So there's a lot of energy here when it comes to Sagittarian exploration, positivity, optimism, excitement, and getting excited about the future. I guess I should turn it this way for you. Wow. You live and you learn. I'm making a mental note for that for next time. So Venus is directly conjunct the moon and she's in this beautiful, beautiful, absolutely stunning this right here trine with chiron who has been teaching us a lot about ourself what is a part what is a priority for us and also a, what is going to be a big part of your identity while you're here on earth now i know that we get to define who we are but there are certain things and there are certain roles that we take on that really help to define us and shape us and when chiron started moving into the sign of aries it's been really highlighting that energy and teaching us a lot about ourselves. There have been a lot of things that we have had to learn to let go of, and that can really crush our inner child. It can crush our optimism. It can crush our positivity, our hope for the future. But again, it, it teaches us how to look for the sparkling, twinkling lights of our path here on earth, believe it or not, in my opinion. I I am someone who comes from a lot of challenges, so I like to turn those challenges into lessons so that I can incorporate them because I choose to do that, you know? I also, we can use this as a time to heal ourselves going back to this transit. Venus does rule beauty, aesthetic, luxury, and attraction and feminine energy, absolutely, but more than anything right now, I want to talk about the heart and what makes you feel good. And for some of you, there's a real strong need to get very, I don't want to say independent, but to really begin to prioritize your wants, wishes, and your voice more than you already have. Okay, and watching how when you speak up for yourself, when you advocate for yourself, how do people take that? Are they in, are they threatened? 
are they willing to listen to you? Are they willing willing to take you into consideration? Or do they do they crash? Do they burn? Do they crumble? You know? Yep, look at that. We have the death card here. We have the chariot. We have two of swords. We have six of cups. So this is about learning how to release, relinquish, and let go of the parts of ourselves or relationships or connections or things that maybe if if we're still trying to hold on to them they create more blockages than anything they stunt our own growth they stunt our own rebirth they stop us from wanting and looking for things that actually are a vibrational match for us now do you see all of the red here outside of the two of swords which is trying to throw water onto the reading but it's almost turning into steam because the heat from the rest of these cards is so aggressive there's a lot of fire here energy here that is that i'm feeling and sensing right now looking at these cards even though they don't all necessarily lean into and look at that there's some more heat right there ace of wands at the bottom of the deck this has a lot to do with your passion for the sake of your heart. And when Venus is transiting through the sign of Sagittarius, we do have to kind of put ourselves out there, go the journey, take that leap of faith, get um, more excited to explore uh, than, than normal, right? In order to get a reward from the risks that it is that we are taking. Where do you see yourself being called to venture out in your life right now? Is there a trip that you are trying not to take? Is there a trip that is that you want to take, but there's something here that might be blocking that? Making sure that the things of the, the past, the issues of the past are not repeating. That's what we're letting go of, okay? So Sagittarius, Venus right now, Venus transiting through the sign of Sagittarius with that beautiful trine with Chiron says, listen, we've already lived through it. We've already done, done different, done whatever we needed to do. Now let's go ahead and do different because there's something here that we can experience. That's going to be great for us. Having said that towards the end of the week, and I know this video is so long guys, I'm so sorry, but towards the end of the week, we have Mars again in this beautiful trine with Jupiter. Now Jupiter is the planet of abundance, expansion, exploration, wisdom, philosophy, higher learning, education, spirituality, not religion, um, but spirituality, our relationship with, um, you know, the powers that be. Um, yeah, this is when our action steps are rewarded, our action steps are making progress, our action steps are leading into our wealth, are making us feel secure, making us helping us to feel stable. And I love that. Shortly after, on the 13th, Mercury right here will finally enter into the sign of Capricorn. Now you're going to have a little brief period of focused mental determination before next week when these two planets conjoin, Mercury and Mars. This can create a little combat and fighting or battling of heads. We'll cross that bridge when we get there, so make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel so that I can guide you through that as well. But for the most part, this is going to be you powering through adversity and you being determined and you being the force that is that you need to be for you. I really, really love that. Then we're going to end the week on the 14th with the sun in a beautiful uh, sextile with uh, Neptune. Technically, it's going to be on the 15th, but we're going to be feeling it on the end, of, the end of this week at the 14th. And I really love that. For this reason, my loves, when the Sun and Neptune conjoin, it's funny that this card just jumped out, the, the Seven of Wands. This is the card of Yoga and Clarity with the Ace of Swords. So this is doing what you have to do in order to make sure that your your energy and your vibe is high. So this is a wonderful time to make plans or to book a class, a yoga class, Pilates, go for a walk, or do something that helps you to get, get out of your head, back into your body, and really just receive. All right, my loves, I hope that this reading was different but good for you today. I hope it served its purpose. I am going to now talk about this Ten of Cups, World Energy, Six of Swords, Knight of Swords, Ten of Swords. Something is really showing up here, specifically with the ten, the World card here. This is a sign of huge success, huge, com huge completion, fulfillment of goals, and the triumph after crazy adversity. This is someone who has shown up and did not back down. 
kept their mind focused and something is about to happen in the cards that feels very positive. That extended reading is gonna be down below. If you are not joining me in that, thank you so much for allowing me to pull the charts for you, to vibe with you, to shuffle for you. I do invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos. Make sure that you are again subscribed because I'm gonna be talking about the new moon and the sign of Capricorn on January 11th. Yeah, this is gonna be about totally, yep, we have relationships, Ace of Wands, death card here, releasing, rebirth, regeneration, newness, partnership, romance. I'm so here for it. And with romance and Capricorn, I love it because it can really stand the test of time. Anyway, until then, you guys, I'm sending you, wow, the lover's card, stop it. Yeah, you can definitely join me for that new moon video. We're gonna have to talk about it. Until then, you guys, I will see you in my next one. Thank you so much for vibing with me. Bye.